Hi class, I wanted to go over a couple of more facts about harmonic functions with you. Harmonic functions are those that satisfy Laplace's equation, so we'll let u denote a function such that del squared u equals zero. Let's begin by recalling what we talked about, the average value principle for a square. Suppose we have a harmonic function u on a square where the boundary conditions of the square are that one side is set equal to the value a, the other side it's set equal to value b, the third side c, and the fourth side d, we show that the value of u in the very center of the square is actually equal to the average of the values on the boundaries, a plus b plus c plus d over 4. Let's recall how we did that. If we looked at del squared equals uh, u equals 0 on a square where all boundaries were held equal to a, well that's like solving for the temperature distribution, say, um, when all sides of a square are held equal to a temperature A, the solution is that the value of the temperature, and therefore U, everywhere within the square is equal to A. But by linearity, we can think of that solution U as the sum of four solutions, U1, U2, U3, and U4, where in the first solution only one side, the top side, is set equal to A, and the other sides are set equal to zero. Um, on the sec for the second solution, the right side is set equal to A and the other side 0. For the third solution, the bottom is set equal to A and all the others equal to 0. And the fourth solution, the left side is set equal to A and on all the others equal to 0. But in fact, all four of these are precisely the same, just rotated by 90 degrees. So in fact, the value of the center at each of these solutions, for each of these solutions, is actually the same. Since we know their sum has to be equal to A, the value of any one of those four has, uh, is at the center is equal to a over 4. But now we can consider the general case where we hold one side uh, at a, another side at b, the third side at c, and the fourth side at d. That's equal to, that is to say, this solution corresponds to the sum of four solutions, one of which is, uh, solves the value, the Laplace's equation with the top side equal to a and the other three equal to zero. The next one, the right side equal to b, and the three sides equal to zero. The third with the bottom side equal to c, and the fourth with the left side equal to d. But from what we just said, we know that the values of this at the center for each of these solutions is just, in this case, a over 4, b over 4, c over 4, and d over 4. So by linearity, the solution to our equation has the property that the value of u at the center is the average a plus b plus c plus d over 4. We also talked about the fact that this must be true for any regular polygon. So if we take a hexagon, for example, with one side set equal to A and the other five sides set equal to zero, the same argument shows that at the center, U has the value, uh, the harmonic function at the center has the value A over 6. That is to say, in general, if we set the sides to be A, B, C, D, E, and F, the value of a harmonic function at the center is the average of the values along the sides. In the limit of an infinite number of sides, we just get a circle, and therefore, if we had a harmonic function on a circle with the boundary held all the way around the circle with some arbitrary fixed parameter, u, if we call the radius circle r and put the center of the circle at the origin, that's just u of r cosine, x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta, uh, integrated around the uh, around the, the perimeter of the circle divided by its circumference, well the r cancels out there, this is just the average value of u all the way around the circle. And by our argument here, that's just the value at the center. So we get the average value um, property for a circle, that the value of the harmonic function at the center is equal to its average all the way around in a circular disk. Now, of course, this doesn't actually have to be a circular disk defining our entire region. It could be a circular disk inside a much larger region, and so this whole, re this whole property here holds for any harmonic function. Its value at the center equals its value when integrated, uh, averaged around a circle around that point. We can actually go further. Suppose we consider the entire disk that is not just the boundary, the circle, but the entire disk contained within the circle can imagine dividing the circle up into different annular regions. The circular average value property applies for each of those annular regions separately. If we 
use all of them and add them up, we can actually prove that the value of u in the center is equal to the average over the entire disk, 1 over the area, 1 over pi r squared times the integral over the entire disk of u and x and y. Using this, we can prove a number of amazing consequences for harmonic functions. Suppose we have a considered harmonic function u, del squared u equals 0, inside some region r. It doesn't have to be a circle, just some bounded region in the plane. We can show that the harmonic function attains its maximum and minimum value on the boundary of r. That is, it can't have a local minimum inside r anywhere. It has to, its maximum uh, exists somewhere along the boundary. And the same thing, if you think about minus u, is true for its minimum as well. You can prove this just by thinking about any interior value, and say you assume that interior value is a maximum. Think about little circles that you form around that value. Since the average value property holds, actually somewhere on the boundary has to have a value at least equal to, if not greater than, that maximum. And you go all the way out and you can show that in fact the maximum has to exist somewhere on the boundary. That means if the maximum also takes a value inside, that function actually has to be a constant. The only way it can have a maximum both inside and on the boundary is if it's, if it's a, a, a constant function. This also allows us to show that the solution to Laplace's equation for fixed boundary conditions is actually unique. Suppose we were to assume there were two different solutions, u sub 1 and u sub 2, for the same boundary conditions on the outside. Think about the difference, u sub 1 minus u sub 2. That difference would also solve Laplace's equation because of linearity, but its boundary condition, the boundary condition of u sub 1 minus u sub 2, would be 0, since we know that they have to agree on the boundary. But by the maximum value principle, if the solution everywhere on the boundary is equal to 0, the only value that the harmonic function can have inside is exactly 0. That is, u1 minus u2 would have to be 0, which means u1 equals u2, and the solution is unique. These results can be generalized in a number of different ways. One generalization is to higher dimensions. The same average value theorem actually applies in three dimensions, or in fact any number of spatial dimensions. You can integrate over a sphere, uh, or inside a, either the boundary of the sphere or the interior of the sphere, and the average value theorem shows you that the um, value of the function at the center of that sphere is equal to its average over the surface of the sphere. And therefore, the same kind of maximum and minimum uniqueness properties follow in three dimensions. In fact, you can show it in more than three spatial dimensions as well. There's also an amazing connection uh, between harmonic functions and uh, in two dimensions and analytic functions. So we're going to study analytic functions later this term. Analytic functions are generalizations of functions of a real variable x into some complex number x plus iy. As we'll see, one of the important assumptions here is that it's a, it is a function only of the combination x plus iy and not x plus iy and x minus iy. If we decompose this function into a real function and an imaginary function, we'll show that both the real and the imaginary parts of this function are harmonic. So functions which depend only on one complex variable actually produce two harmonic functions, u and v. Actually, these two functions are related to one another in some very important and interesting ways, ways we will study. Now, see you next time.